abducted by aliens from the ugly tuna saluna after 8.55 a.m. Uh, this is Strokes and uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we, from uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, old, 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 old the mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? I, 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 I... JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not... Having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he d is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number know? again, Carl? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm, I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't, I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh, God. If, right, say if, like, you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you, c you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. <coughs> yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? <laughs> no, it's just like, not Terrifying, only, yeah. it's like you've killed someone and you look. But I mean, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. What that makes is, it even worse? <laughs> and what, what makes it even worse, they were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, but be... say if it was someone who's like really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that, it's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag, no wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well, as Bono said, did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... Is that it under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this, I'm not... I'm not ignoring... record, this is getting a bit slop sloppy, no, 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 it's not, no, no, no. No, it is, Rick, it's getting is sloppy. It? It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to um, this award ceremony in the week. Um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, yeah. let me, I have to explain it to Carl, because uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for uh, Television and Radio Industries Club annual awards, right? We never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio uh, industry club. Right. That's yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours, before we had fun. to sit down, and, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I'm literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV radio industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so they, 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 the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like straight away, it was you know, old school stuff. You want to like, thank the ladies? Because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies. All the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke? No. Nope. <laughs> just, thank, just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during oh, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and... Um, Sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so go on. <laughs> and uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, "Thank you, God, for." We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's why. We, that's why we were laughing. Out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> We went anyway, and then he went. I thank you for this. Uh, and uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went. What about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, "I've never been. I've never been left out of grace before." <laughs> so, but we had to. And we had to like, kind of like bow our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of. Lots of people did. I'm pretty sure. Cliff, I, didn't. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there. I don't know who he is, says there's a lot of people here this, this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went, table 77, Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. Can we, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, absolutely, he looked like uh, a bit like um, 
Uh, Barrett Holmes, his <laughs> hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107, the cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, when is this going to... Uh... He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman, right, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was there was booing yeah. there, and yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I, see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award. Cowell and uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, forty-three. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> and empty and it was chairs. Empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he used to speak, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done a Radio 2 show, I don't think that's well, anymore. Well, not we're not dissing no, anyone. We're too. not taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know, uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad-lib a speech, right, and I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, it's partly work, it's partly a holiday, Kyle, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, Actually, she's been there for a long time. Yeah, she, and it's like, I was thought she was going, she doesn't call. You yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she <laughs> We thought she was going to get wars. photos out, maybe, start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Cooper was there. So Henry Cooper. <laughs> it was so good, because every was... single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you were out of pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, well, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you did you look at them with their eyes shut, <laughs> like, like you did at school? What do you mean? Well, what, when you had did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like you'd do that. You'd do your um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> Table 60, Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> That's a uh, corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky 1 to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great, it's real glam rocket. That's T Rex and Bowie. I was in a, a place on it from uh, Siggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album. I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. all right? Oh, of course, yeah, always. Yeah, always. A bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did. Um, uh, che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, you learned all about Russ Butin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm. How does that go? Do, how do you like that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm. They're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same thing. Of... Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had, like, asthma, yeah. right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he... Um... He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out or it's not true. Right. Which, so he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you, look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles. <laughs> testicles absence of. Just sort of skimmed through. Cause <laughs> one of. It, yeah. it, mother, mother, brackets <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on, and somebody had put a bag in, a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah, yeah. and but I the wondered table whether it was under him. the table. Yeah, but... What, you're wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, what, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball thing. sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost... But why would he have only just lost the one? 
Uh, because the, the way we're sitting. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, again, again. If, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up. Maybe they could. Uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could uh, maybe phone up and confirm the uh, the testicle uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, done a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm no. talking about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it, and I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no. Even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on more on the right lines there. <laughs> Is there is anyone who um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A level maths that can bear? Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to It's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem... Well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number of combinations are, that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up mm. have happened, and they're just as likely or unlikely as any other combination. Right? Mm. It's just that you feel intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are le is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs>
he did go around because there were snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think there is now. If someone knows these now, we were someone just uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White asked Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learned as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free, that was an extra... I'll, I'll learn you something here, snakes. Well, yeah. I'll, sorry, I'll just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. You don't learn someone something, you teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not it, it, it one's passive. You you, you, you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. Snake. It's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors that you're making. It's like where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a. <laughs> familiar type thing that's not, that happens to snakes. Okay. Yeah. They take it for granted, don't they? Right. Snakes born two heads, they'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went <laughs> <laughs> who had two heads? The snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was it, was it, was there, there was kids at your school with two heads, was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads. And webbed hands, but they right. weren't related. And they, they weren't friends, because that would have been too obvious, yeah. he said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right, I sneezed a couple of times. I don't know if I'm allergic to them, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh, oh God, he went, he went, bloody hell, I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open? I went, yeah. Yeah, and then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing, he went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that thing? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song here, eh, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie. Sorrow. Beautiful. Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pinups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? That was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading a book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. For the best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but, mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did um, the s name that tune. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswords. Do you remember Crosswords? It, it was, was the, from the 80s. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one, right? It was on the, It was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And, no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. He was on the. He was the uh, link man. And he went, coming up next, uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswords. With, uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswords players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 oh. Who's your favourite Crosswits player? Uh, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Barry Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is this with Toxic and uh, yeah, Cryer? Yeah, it was, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you want. I used to watch it with, um, what's his name? Frank Moore. Yeah. Frank Moore. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that was great. You were impression. putting the impressions because obviously I... while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what? He said I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. I have all the people that come in here for sessions. I think he's really good him, and I said I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, you're strange, you're alien, and it interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on the. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air, he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40 year old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio, in, he's, he's, slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <laughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know, likely, yeah, uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, we ran out of it at five past one, exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, in that a sort would... of humorous sketch. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if like David Bowie was you know a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was well, some of the funny the, things he would we say? We saw that. Um, that what was that in when it said uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what uh, yeah, it would sound you see like... This? Dead Ringers is this impressionist show. They did a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was all right. No, it was just that the write-up in uh, the Radio one Times, magazine, I think it was. Radio Times, said, uh, ever wondered what it would be like if uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby? Or what would it be like if uh, there was an I think animal it was, hospital... was, was hosted was... by uh, Anne Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I have. I have wondered. Was it, Were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are you are the weakest you are the weakest dog skink. Or no, what was it? It was something like the the they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that. Yeah, it was. This is right. flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play changes. Hello, Iggy Pop, you nutter. Stop cutting your head. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, 2 o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. And there's little Carl over there. Right. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Don't know why I'm <laughs> yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, The Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every, every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week... Not like um, us to rip off another idea and just no, use no, it for no, our own... No, 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 no. No, but this time... The yeah, white van man in The Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been as he's asked, uh, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right... In, and Freddie Mercury. I was into uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's you know... A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgia boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do no your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well, they they're not, they're only they, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. they're, go they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. Yep. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at That's they were looking I'm for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> what, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be all right. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it. I don't even think about her now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe? Zoe Harris. How long did it take you <laughs> to? To be you? honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember <laughs> good reason that. I love that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her. And then the <laughs> bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her. And then I remember, right, we're at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp. Uh, yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And um, she was crying. Because you were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, what, she, had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so, she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all her mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset, and I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> Hold on, though. Wait a minute. What do you mean all the mates were saying, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying. Help her out. And, like, and oh, you did nothing? I don't know. She's not injured. <laughs> Got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where I were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Cur his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't. So as far as she... you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, she's going to make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole. Screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> In the corner. Ask him another oh, question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities, oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy. And the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but... No. People are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has a go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah. I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it it was do. with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, and the mates. Right. 
So okay. you were playing Dead Arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've got in a track Yes, here, I too. just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work. And this was a previous single and his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to Sorry, uh, back announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and the track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can you know, get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can take that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Okay, put that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's, we, it's, it's week three of his education. You've, you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I, I maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what us the story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, th what, what I do you think? Can't do it in a minute. <laughs> well, I, I, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. Um, <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, right. that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just... Didn't like him, so he went to Munich, and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was in the army, and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital, and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended, and he was like, "Oh God, I want." I was doing that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah. Sorry. I, uh, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right. Go on. Right, so, um, so... He was in hospital. He was in hospital. He gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. <laughs> A... I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, I'm not nailing the fact, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, he's, he's Let's try and help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. Oh right. Right. So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um. He, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, Sorry wait a minute. Is he, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? 35? So let's what, skip, where are let's you? skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain... Yeah. Came a bit sort of uns unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So, well, oh, God. So a bit goes, late, but yeah. Go he, go, he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, Germany sort of surrenders. 
Yeah. So it's all over. Forget it. We can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this. He thought, oh, I can't, can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife. Right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And, um... So, uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries them or something, or burns them. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between it felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Right. Next week... That's fantastic. That's remarkable. No. It, I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but... Yeah, you lost I've, your been, I've had a really busy week, and last night I was, like, whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning I woke up, and, you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. That's I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. You've right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same, same series. There's little books. There's tiny little books. Just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed Win with so much information. Though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah. I d I'm getting a bit bored now, though. This is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris? And Zoe. The, 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 wait, I'm the, wondering if, yeah, you've spiralled into something there. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's like all these other, you know, these men, these men of history. They always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the better left out in the Hitler story. Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Fly <Flat> record. <laughs> <laughs> PJ Harvey, this is Love, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl. Um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I know, yes. I'm, I know we've sort of banned each other from speaking to him. What, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But um, he said, uh, oh, just saw a programme. He said, what's that big balloon that blew up? And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went, is that the, the Hindenburg? <laughs> Hey everyone, Marcus Parks here to give you an update on the Sausage Fest coming up on October 5th. The whole show is going to start upstairs at the Creek in the Cave at 1093 Jackson Avenue in Long Island City, Queens at 5 p.m. Uh, and that's going to go until 10 p.m. That's five hours of stand-up featuring your favorite cave comedy radio performers. And at the same time, downstairs, we're going to be having live podcasts from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. And then the Cowmen, the band that you're listening to in the background, and features myself and Hold McNeely of the Round Table of Gentlemen, is going to be playing a set at 10 p.m. So, hey, see you there, puppet. There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. What was that? You know what I've discovered really riles people up? To a, to a frothy anger? Yeah. Is singing the song Friday by Rebecca Black about any other day of the week. <laughs> and just throwing stuff in there. Like it's you know, Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday, feeling sad on Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday day and nobody cares the weekend's long away. Right, so, uh, it's Tuesday day. Shut up! up. <laughs> Good Oops, God, you weren't lying. I'm That's lying unbelievably <laughs> aggravating. It's Wednesday. No, all right, though. Welcome to the show, everyone. No, we're not starting off like that. It's too late and so we gotta put out Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Hollywood has changed you, Henry Zabrowski, and none of us are happy about it. Welcome no, to the show. I'm pretty sh- pleased with it. Well, Marcus is happy. Good. Are you are you happy now, Henry? You made Marcus happy, which means you did something wrong. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Name's Rebecca Black. Remember me? <laughs> Nobody else does. No. I certainly don't. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca, you seem to age. You you don't, you do not age gracefully, huh? I gotta tell you, you know what day of the week I don't like anymore? <laughs> fucking Friday. Friday, <laughs> right? Because yeah, yeah. the song that everyone made fun of you for. Yeah. Sick of fucking Fridays, huh? Got it. Yeah, uh, well, I'll see you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm betting on a bunch of dogs fighting each other over a piece of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm happy your yeah. life is going better I than hope most the of black ours. Black one wins. <laughs> well, probably will. All right, that's Marcus. I'm Ben. We're joined by Rebecca Black. <laughs> hey, it's me, Hollywood Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's just get into it. Yeah. Uh, part two, Chikatilo, Mother Russia. Things are about to get even you more know, disgusting than you ever imagined they about could. Him too. You know, the thing about this guy, again... He gets less charm in every sentence I read about him. Yep, <laughs> yep. He starts off at kind of a high note, you know, just an abused child who want, who wanted to do well for his mother and for his country. And now... Also, Ragnar posted a really interesting post yes. about, like, comparing Andre Chikatilo to the entire Russian idea. And it's very Great. interesting, too, yeah. because as you see, when he gets caught, it's in the year 1991 and he gets mm-hmm. sentenced. It's like it, literally his whole life moves with the broken dream of Russia yeah. right. and the falling of that of the USSR. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's very much, very much, very much. And I want to I want to thank Sophie Gonzo for that beautiful song. Oh yeah. On the, on the on the page. But I don't know why everyone thinks I'm always crying. <laughs> well, you let's just say you are um a giant sack of tears. I'm not saying I have never I don't cry. I'm I'm of German descent. When my when my dad's dad died, you know when you know what he said to me? What? He said, "Hey Ben, your grandfather's dead." I cried a little this morning. That's it. And I said, "Okay." That's nice. But then he also perfect. say, "We have to burn the papers and hide his medals from the <laughs> Führer himself." <laughs> well, <laughs> the time period's over. I can say what I want. <laughs> Anything I want about yeah. you, and Heritage. You're on fire, Henry. Well, let's get back into Andre Chikatilo by listening to a fictionalized account of Chikatilo's life. Uh-huh. This is a clip from a movie that starred Malcolm McDowell uh, back this in... This is his... This is Chikatilo's version of the game. <laughs> this is big. Right? Is, this is from a movie called Evalinko. <sighs> so insert your juggalo uh, ICP jokes there. First time you've seen a real <laughs> man. Scared. But you like it, too, don't you? Be honest. He's talking to a little girl. He's got his pants down. <laughs> you can touch him if you want. Him? Yeah, give me your hand. Uh. No? Oh, she doesn't want to. <laughs> Mm-mm. He wants to be your friend. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He told me that he likes you. He's dying to show you what happens to him when you touch him. <laughs> oh my God. 